Whew, well, there you have it. That was a lot of options. I hope you didn't find it boring, but now you know how to flash almost any ISO onto the USB drive so that it will work on your computer. Hello guys and welcome to the channel. In this video, I would like to show you how to flash any ISO onto the USB drive using Rufus. This will be a complete tutorial guide for the beginners. If you're first time using Rufus or if you just want to know what are those features that you can use in Rufus, today I'm going to explain it to you in detail. We're going to go through each options step by step so you know exactly what they mean and how to use them properly so that it works on the computer that you want to flash it for. So let's get started. But before we start, if you're first time to the channel, please take a second to click the subscribe button and hit the notification bell so you don't miss new videos. Also, if you like this video and find it helpful, please support with a like. I appreciate it very much and let's get started. So first of all, open up any browser that you like and go to the rufus.ie. We want to download it from the official website. They do have a portable one and I do like this portable one. You can also use the standard one that's going to be an installer. So you can install it on your computer operating system permanently and then you can use it anytime you want it. But I'm just going to download the portable one and also you can choose for your platform, the Windows 64 bit, Windows 32 bit and Windows ARM 64. They have already got it covered. That's a pretty new platform, but they're already caught up. So let's go ahead and download this portable one and save it. Then go ahead and click on it. There we go. So this is the program. Okay, let's go ahead and flush the ISO onto the USB stick. Just insert the USB stick that you would like to use to flash the ISO on. When you start Rufus, the first field you gotta choose your device. And in this case, it's gonna be your USB drive. I got a 64 gigabyte, then click select to choose the image, the one that you have downloaded. Right now I have this MX 23.4. So just choose it and click open. And it will automatically fill up some fields for the boot selection. It has already selected this ISO. As you can see, when you create a bootable USB drive with persistence, it means the changes you make while running the live session such as installed software, files, or system settings will be saved across reboots. This allows you to use the USB drive similarly to a regular OS installation, retaining your changes and data even after restarting your computer. So this will be excellent if you plan to use this OS on the USB drive and not simply to install on your PC or laptop. The persistent partition is the section of the USB drive dedicated to storing these changes without persistence any data or changes made during a live session would be lost after rebooting. Since I have a 64 gigabyte USB drive, I can dedicate quite a lot of space for persistence. Usually eight gigabyte or more is ideal if you plan to use the live USB as a portable OS with regular updates, more software and significant data storage. So I will actually give it 50 gigabyte. This way I can save files on it and it will not remove them if I shut down the USB drive. Okay, now this step is very important, the partitioning scheme. You can choose between MBR or the master boot record and GPT, which is the GUID partition table. If you plan to work on both older BIOS systems and newer UEFI systems, that has a CSM module and legacy support, then you should choose MBR. It will work on target systems with BIOS and UEFI. But if you're planning to use it only on the newer machines that only has UEFI, you can choose GPT. As you can see, there is no selection. It will not work on older machines. So I would suggest you choose MBR. This will make sure that it will work on older machines with BIOS and as well as on the newer machines with UEFI systems that also has compatibility support module. And most newer computers, they do have the compatibility support module, so you should be okay. There are a few options you can choose for advanced drive properties. First one is list USB hard drives. This option allows Rufus to display not only standard USB flash drives, but also external USB hard drives and SSDs. But be very careful when selecting this option, 
as choosing the wrong drive could lead to formatting and data loss on the external drive you didn't intend to use. So be extra careful with this unless you install it on the external SSD. Don't highlight this option, but if you're planning to install it on the external SSD instead of regular flash drive, you need to highlight it. The second option, add fixes to old biases. This option adds compatibility tweaks that help older BIOS systems recognize and boot from the USB drive properly. It creates a small extra partition that some older BIOSes require to boot properly. So for example, if you're planning to use it on a very old machine, like let's say 15 years old, I would suggest you highlight this option as it will allow it to boot on older computers. And align means it ensures the partition on the USB I aligned in the way that older biases can read them without issues. So if you plan to use the bootable USB on older computer with legacy BIOS that might struggle to boot from a modern drive setup, this option can improve compatibility. The drawback is that it might slightly reduce the space available for your persistence or main partition, but this is usually minimal. So I would just add it to be safe depending what computer you're going to be using it on. And the last option is going to be Enable Runtime UEFI Media Validation. This enables Rufus to check the created UEFI bootable media at runtime to ensure it is valid and hasn't been corrupted during the creation process. This is extremely helpful. You want to make sure that it has been flashed correctly, so a little bit extra time it takes to create the bootable drive due to the validation process, but it provides you peace of mind. So let's go ahead and check it as well. It is useful for UEFI systems to ensure that the boot media is reliable and can boot without errors. It adds an extra layer of verification, confirming that the bootable drive will work as intended before you attempt to use it. Then for the volume label, you can call it whatever you like. Let's just leave it as a max live. I'm totally fine with that, but you can call it whatever you like. Now the file system, there are two options. You can either use it as large FAT32, which is set by default, or use NTFS. The FAT32 is more universally compatible, especially with both older BIOS systems and UEFI systems. But it has a file limit of four gigabyte, meaning any single file larger than four gigabyte cannot be stored on the USB drive. It is ideal for creating bootable USBs that need to work on a wide range of systems and for Linux ISOs where individual file sizes are below 4 GB. The NTFS, on another hand, is supported by most modern UEFI systems but not as universally compatible with older BIOS systems. Some older computers may not boot from an NTFS formatted drive without specific BIOS support but it supports larger file sizes greater than 4 GB, making it suitable for ISOs that contain large files. So you can decide what you want to do. Let's just choose it large FAT32. I'm fine with that. Then for the cluster size, we'll just leave it as 32 KB because it's a balanced option. It offers a good balance between disk space efficiency and read-write performance. It's a solid choice for general use. And the last few options here for advanced format options, you can check to create extended label and icon files. This option adds an auto run ENF file and a custom icon to the USB drive. It is useful if you want to personalize your USB drive and make it stand out visually. That's an icon that will appear for the USB drive in File Explorer. So we can just check mark it for sure. Then the check device for bad blocks means that Rufus is going to scan the USB drive for bad sectors. That means that Rufus will perform a read test on the USB drive to identify if there are any problematic sectors. If any are found, it marks them as unusable so that data isn't written to those parts. It is recommended if you're using an older or previously unreliable USB drive and you want to ensure its integrity before creating a bootable drive. But since I'm going to create it on a brand new USB drive, I will skip this check mark. All right, we have went through all the options. Now, as you can see, the status is ready. Let's go ahead and click start and it will start flashing the ISO on the USB stick. But before you do that, make sure there is no data that you need on the USB stick. 
as it will destroy any data on this USB drive and you will lose it forever. So make sure if you're using any USB stick with some files that you might need to copy them before proceeding. Otherwise, they will be all gone and most likely you will not be able to recover them. So don't do that. But since I have a brand new USB drive, I'll just click start and it just warns us once again, it will destroy all the data and we just click OK. And it will flash the ISO on the USB stick. And one more thing I would like to mention that on some operating systems, you might need to disable secure boot in the BIOS or UEFI on your computer to make it load from the USB stick. Because not all operating systems have a valid secure boot certificate and this prevents the operating system to load from the USB stick. So if that happens to you, you need to disable secure boot on your computer. Here is how to do it. Power on the computer. And when it starts launching, press the dedicated key to enter BIOS or UEFI settings. Usually it is an F2 key, but it could be different depending on your laptop manufacturer. So I'm going to put a list of all possible keys on the screen. So just choose the one that is designed for your computer. Then enter the password for your BIOS if it's necessary. Then in the BIOS, go to the boot section. If you have UEFI, it might be located a little bit different, but just look for the similar section. And where it says secure boot, as you can see, it is enabled. Make sure to disable it. Just press enter and use the arrow keys to disable and then press enter again. Now, as you can see, the secure boot is disabled. And press F10 to exit and save the settings. And then just press enter. Now it should start loading from the USB drive. Okay, so it's finally ready and we have got it finished. So we can close Rufus and remove the USB drive. Make sure to safely remove the USB drive. Well, there you have it. Now you know what each option is designed for and how to properly flash the ISO onto the USB drive. You can apply this guide to almost any ISO that you can think of, though there might be a few differences. But one thing to remember for sure, before you flash it onto the USB drive, make sure there is no important files on that USB drive so that you're not gonna lose them. It is very important. Besides that, that's it. I hope you find this video helpful. If you like it, please support with your like. If you're first time to the channel, please take a second to click the subscribe button. This will help me a lot to grow my channel and bring you more helpful and interesting videos. If you got any comments, questions, suggestions, drop them down in the comment section below. And if you want to support my channel, you can check out the links in the description. I appreciate it very much. Have a nice day and I'll see you soon. Bye bye.